Hi everyone, thank you for all being here and welcome to the today's first online seminar. So before introducing Dr. Ahmed Taha Kuru, I will talk about FIRST, which is dedicated to provide free, high quality outreach events and online seminars to reach broader robotics and control engineering communities around the world. Thus, Tansal and I periodically invite distinguished people like Dr. Kuru to give their talks on recent research results related to robotics and control. So the aim of the force connecting academicians and government industry researchers with each other through the research and education discussions. We cordially hope that you will enjoy all the force events and you will find them highly valuable for your own research. I also would like to add, we have support from IEEE Control Systems Society, where you can also find past force talks and many other talks at the IEEE CSS video library webpage. I also would like to mention about the WebEx. You are all muted during the presentation. If you are not, please mute yourself. As Tansa said, it's changing every day. And if you want to ask questions after the presentation, you can do it by simply unmuting yourself or passing your questions to the chat box. Note that this session is being recorded and to be posted to the FIRST website as well as the IEEE CSS website. And jointly with Tansalusulan, where we are very proud today to host Dr. Ahmed Taha Koru. Ahmed Taha Koru received the Bachelor of Science and Master's degrees in Electrical and Electronics Engineering from Birkent University, respectively in 2009 and 2012, and the PhD degree in Control and Automation Engineering from Yildiz Technical University in 2017. He has been a postdoctoral research scholar at the Department of Mechanical Engineering, University of South Florida, and the Department of Aerospace Engineering, Pennsylvania State University. He is currently a postdoctoral research associate and adjunct professor at the University of Texas Arlington Research Institute. His research is focused on cooperative control, time delay systems, switching systems, and robotics. Well, for all of you who are here, I would like to thank Ahmed for participating in our forum as a speaker. Ahmed, as you have the presentation ball, please go ahead and start whenever you are ready. Thank you very much, Merve, for introducing me. Hello, everyone. I am extremely happy to be here with you. Uh, my name is Ahmed Takoru. The title of today's presentation is Cooperative Output Regulation of Heterogeneous Multi-Agent Systems, a Global Design Approach to Internal Model-Based Distributed Control Synthesis. I know the title contains too much terminology. I will clarify each of them one by one. Uh, specifically, throughout the presentation, I will describe what is a heterogeneous multi-agent system, what is the cooperative output regulation problem. I will introduce two different control architectures to solve this problem, namely the internal model-based control and the feed-forward control. Finally, I will introduce the global and local design of distributed controllers for the internal model-based distributed controllers. Let me start with what is a multi-agent system? A multi-agent system is a computerized system composed of multiple interacting intelligent agents. Multi-agent systems cooperate to solve the problems that are difficult or impossible for an individual agent to solve. Each circle represents an intelligent agent in the figure. The group is homogeneous if its members are identical. Otherwise, it's called an heterogeneous multi-agent system. We observe cooperation and group behavior in almost every biological system. We see pictures of two different homogeneous multi-agent systems here. A flock of birds flies together to save energy and migrate long distances at the left picture. A group of fish looks bigger and avoids shark attacks when they move together at the right picture. A bird, a bird or a fish alone cannot achieve these go mentioned goals. A smart grid is an electricity network that can cost efficiently integrate the behavior and actions of all users connected to it, namely generators and consumers. The goal for a smart grid 
is to ensure an economically efficient, sustainable power with low losses and high levels of quality and security of supply and safety. As seen in the representing picture, it is a heterogeneous multi-agent system since the agents are not identical. I hope you see my mouse. There are many more applications of multi-agent systems. Group imaging of a radio telescope array is an example, as we see in the picture of the National Radio Astronomy Observatory. This cooperation allows enhance the resolution of the radio images. Formation flight of a group of aerial vehicles reduces the fuel consumption and increases, for example, the monitoring capability. We can find many more examples. What is the cooperative output regulation? Let me start with the single agent case, namely the output regulation problem. Two objectives of the output regulation problem are to asymptotically track a class of reference inputs and reject a class of disturbances while maintaining the overall closed loop stability. In the control theory literature, it is very common to asymptotically track a step or ramp input by adding integral terms to the control structure. The output regulation problem extends this asymptotic tracking capability toward more general signals, such as sinusoidal signals, polynomial signals, and more. The reference inputs can be trajectory, an altitude, an attitude, or an electrical power signal, depending on the application. Here we see the output regulation controller overview. Uh, we, we would like to asymptotically track the reference input and reject the disturbance. The output regulation is called the cooperative output regulation if a group of agents solves the output regulation problem together with a cooperative behavior. In other words, the cooperative output regulation problem is to find the proper distributed control law to achieve mentioned two objectives and the closed loop stability. Therefore, we need to uh, mathematically represent the agent dynamics, the interactions among the agents, the reference inputs, and disturbances to study the cooperative output regulation problem. We study the cooperative linear output regulation problem where the agent dynamics are represented by heterogeneous linear time invariant dynamics as seen in this displayed equation. Xi is the state, Ui is the input, Ei is the tracking error, F omega is the reference input to be tracked, Ei m omega is the external disturbance to be rejected. An exosystem with the dynamics given by the displayed equation generates the reference input and the disturbance. The exosystem is called a leader. In other words, the leader is the mathematical representation of the reference inputs and the disturbances. Here, I exemplify to give an idea how to represent some commonly used reference input signals or disturbances with the matrix A0. For example, the step input can be represented by A0 equals zero with an eigenvalue, zero eigenvalue. A ramp input can be represented by this matrix. Uh, note that this is in the Jordan form and there is uh, two zero eigenvalues here. And sinusoidal input can be represented by this matrix with eigenvalues lie in the imaginary axis. Uh, beyond these simple signals, the matrix A0 can represent more complex signals such as polynomial trajectories. The first assumption states that the leader system matrix A0 uh, has no eigenvalue with a negative real part. This assumption is only for convenience and does not cause loss of generality because we do not need to worry about the eigenvalues with negative real parts. In particular, the components of the exogenous signals uh, corresponding to the modes associated with the eigenvalues of A0 with negative real parts will exponentially decay to zero. Therefore, they have no effect on the asymptotic behavior of the closed loop system. There are two main approaches to solve the cooperative linear output regulation problem, namely the feedforward approach and internal model approach. The feedforward approach includes a feedforward gain that relies on A0, the leader system matrix. On the other hand, the internal model approach utilizes a copy of A0 instead of using A0 directly. 
each approach has advantages and disadvantages over the other. The most important advantage of the internal model approach is that the internal model approach is robust with respect to small variations of the agent parameters. Uh, whereas the feed forward approach is known to be not robust to parameter uncertainties. We studied the internal model approach in our work. The internal model approach, there's uh, a second assumption over the leader dynamics. This assumption states that the, P, the pair G1i and G2i contains a peak of internal model of A0 for all of the agents. Instead of using A0, the internal model approach utilizes G1i and G2i in its structure. I briefly sketched the definition of a peak copy model at the bottom of the slide here. This definition describes how to generate a peak copy of A0. Even the definition looks complicated, it provides them straightforward directions to construct a copy for the model. For example, once the minimal polynomial of A0 is calculated, which can be done analytically or numerically, the corresponding eigenvalues are used to construct a state space representation in the controllable canonical form. Now we have G1i and G2i. We represented the agents and the leader. Now it is time to represent the interactions among the agents. The interactions among the agents are the information flow in the cooperative linear output regulation problem. We assume that an agent can measure the output of another agent, or at least there's a communication network they share their output information. A graph is a mathematical structure and represents the available information to each agent. See the example figure here. <clears throat> in the corresponding figure, the outputs of the second and the fifth agents are available to the first agent, for instance. Moreover, the leader output is available to none of the agents, but the first one. This information flow helps all of the agents to track the reference input and reject the external disturbances, although some of the agents have no access to the leader node. The adjacency matrix here represents the information flow among the agents. In degree matrix D represents the number of neighbors of each agent and the pinning gains G represent either an agent has access to the leader node or not, which is visualized by this dashed arrow. All of the agents have no access to the leader node, uh, as seen in the previous figure. Only some of them have this privilege. Therefore, it is not feasible to design a control law based on the error term here, given by the difference between the agent output and the leader output. Instead, a local virtual regulating error depending on the available information is utilized. Some agents have access to the leaders when they have a positive GI, the pinning gain. Furthermore, the agents utilize the information of their neighbors depending on the adjacency metrics, specifically the, the weights AIJ here. This local virtual, virtual regulating error is useful to solve the output regulation problem cooperatively. And our final assumption is related to the graph G. In particular, the augmented directed graph G bar has a spanning tree. G bar is the resulting graph after including the leader node. This assumption guarantees the existence of a path from the leader node to each agent. The example graph in the figure contains a spanning tree. For example, let me check if there exists a path from the leader to the fourth agent. If you follow the purple arrows, we eventually arrive at the fourth agent. In fact, the agent edges represented by the purple arrows construct a spanning tree. To summarize, the spanning tree condition guarantees a healthy information flow among the agents to solve the cooperative linear output regulation problem. It is very standard in multi-agent systems. Now we can state the formal definition of the cooperative linear output regulation problem. Given the LTI multi-agent system, together with the exosystem and the augmented directed graph G bar, find a distributed control law such that the resulting closed loop system matrix is hurdles for any initial condition of the closed loop system and the exosystem, in other words, the leader, the error term will uh, converge to the zero for all of the agents. The property A is related to the closed loop system stability, and the property B is about the two objectives of the output regulation problem, that is, to asymptotically track the reference input and reject the external disturbances. 
The distributed dynamic state feedback control log given by the displayed equation is a good candidate to solve the problem. In fact, it solves the problem under assumptions one to three when the closed loop system matrix is perverse. Before presenting this key result, observe that there are four design parameters here. G1i, G2i, K1i, and K2i. The peak of internal model assumption determines G1i and G2i. Uh, as a reminder, we used canoni uh, control controllable canonical form to construct G1i and G2i. Therefore, we only need to synthesize two parameters as a designer, K K1i and K2i. The LTI agent dynamics, together with the dynamic states of the feedback control load, yields the displayed closed loop dynamics on the table. At the left column, we see the closed loop dynamics in the compact form. The compact form state XG contains the states of all agents and the dynamic states of all control loads. The state vector XG is a large vector. Therefore, the system matrix A plus BK the input matrix BG, the output matrix CG, and DG are all large matrices. An important observation here is that the control structure K has a specific structure with lots of zeros. There are two block diagonal matrices side by side. The first one is here. Uh, the block diagonal uh, matrix, the first one is here, the diagonal entries of which are K1Is. The second one, uh, the second one is here the block diagonal of entries of which are k 2 is So there are two block diagonal matrices here with a lot of zeros. At the right column, we see the exosystem free local closed loop dynamics. The local agent dynamic state GI consists of the states XI and the dynamic state ZI only. Therefore, it is a small vector. The control gain KI contains K1I and K2I side by side and this control gain KI has no special structure. A design method considering the large matrices at the left column is called a globalism. And design method considering the small matrices at the right column is called a local design. A global design considers the multi-agent system as a whole. On the other hand, a local design method deals with the agents one by one from one to n. The global condition is stated as follows. If assumptions one to three hold and the big, uh, the large matrix A plus BK is orbits, then the dynamic state feedback control law solves the co uh, cooperative linear output regulation problem. This problem would be very easy if K had no special structure. In particular, we could place the eigenvalues of A plus BK to have a stable closed loop system with pre specified performance criterion. Such an eigenvalue placement requires a full control gain matrix K without any constraint over its entries. However, it is known that the structured control problem is non-convex and in NP hard in terms of computational complexity, that is non-deterministic polynomial time hardness. Since resulting K of the cooperative linear output regulation problem with a dynamic state feedback control law has a special structure with lots of zero, it is non-practical to utilize the global condition to synthesize control gains. The structure is here, lots of zeros. So the problem is NP hard. Therefore, it's not practical to use this condition here. To overcome this difficulty, the agent-wise local sufficient condition is stated as follows. If assumption one to three hold, the exhaust system free system matrix is orbits and then H infinity norm criterion is satisfied for all of the agents, then uh, dynamic state feedback control law solves the cooperative linear output regulation problem. Rho FA is the spectral radius of the scaled version of the adjacency matrix A. GFI represents the transfer function of the exosystem free local closed loop dynamics. It is well studied in the literature to synthesize control gains to satisfy this H infinity norm condition. An algebraic Riccato equation or a linear matrix inequality is based feasibility problem easily synthesize such control gains. However, this condition only guarantees that A plus BK, the large matrix, is Hurwitz. However, it does not say anything about the eigenvalue locations of this large matrix. 
Therefore, we don't have much information about the closed loop performance. It only guarantees the stability. I list some reference, references here to find more details about this table. Now we can compare the global design and the agent wise local design. The global design is a difficult problem and it is in non deterministic polynomial time hardness. The agent wise local design is easy to solve with off the shelf algorithms and it is in the polynomial real time complexity. The global design has no conservatism, whereas the agent wise local design is subject to a conservatism. The global design considers the system as a whole. Therefore, this approach considers the information flow and enables to optimize control gains for a pre-specified performance. Uh, on the other hand, the agent-wise local design only guarantees the closed-loop system stability of, and does not have much information about the closed-loop performance. The global design is computationally expensive. Uh, it is not feasible to synthesize control gains even with a few agents. On the other hand, the agent-wise local design is very scalable since it is computationally cheap. Here I compare the extra extreme design methods in terms of conservatism and the computational complexity. We study global design methods, which we may rate in between those two extremes. For, ex for example, we studied a novel global design, which has a polynomial computational complexity. This approach is less conservative than the agent-wise local sufficient condition. In another work, we studied an agent-wise local design which has more information about the uh, global performance. For example, the structured Lyapunov inequality with a stable factor in uh, this structure form yields a convex formulation of the control gain synthesis for the large control gain matrix K. Note that if we do not constrain the stable factor P to be in this structure form, the Lyapunov inequality by itself yields an unstructured K. However, we require to calculate the control KK in the structured form with certain entries are zero. The structure P here guarantees that the resulting control gain is in the structured form, what we are searching for. To compare the agent-wise local design with structured global design, let me define two different sets. The first one is KL. KL is the set of all control gains for which the uh, agent-wise local sufficient condition holds. The second one is KS. KS is the set of all stabilizing control gains for which the structure of Lyapunov inequality holds. The theorem states that KL is a subset of KS. In particular, there exists a structured Lyapunov function for every control gain satisfying the agent-wise local sufficient condition. Furthermore, a numerical example shows that the converse does not hold, specifically some control gains for which the structured Lyapunov inequality holds violate the uh, agent-wise local sufficient condition. To summarize, there are more control gains in the set uh, corresponding to the structured Lyapunov inequality. Therefore, the structured global design is less conservative than the agent-wise local design. Here, I give the reference with, which we published last year for the details of this table. As shown in here, it's in a very standard form. The structured Lyapunov inequality is in a very standard form, and it is no different than the standard Lyapunov inequality except its structure. Therefore, uh, it can easily be modified to optimize the global performance, such as the regional eigenvalue assignment of the closed loop system matrix A plus BK. Specifically, we can assign the eigenvalues of the closed loop system matrix to lie in a pre specified region to have a satisfactory transient response uh, with a pre specified decay rate and the damping ratio of the large matrix A plus BK. On the other hand, the agent wise local design method is not able to optimize global performance. This makes the structured global design is very efficient, in particular when high performance is a demand. We compared the structured global design and the agent-wise local design in terms of computational complexity. Both methods have polynomial time complexity. However, the required time to utilize the global design grows at the order of uh, four and a half with respect to system scale n, whereas the uh, agent-wise local design grows at order of two. This makes the agent-wise local design method very practical in terms of scalability. We see that 
it takes approximately 10 minutes to solve the problem for n equals 100 with 100 agents here. Less than 600 seconds, approximately 10 minutes. It takes about 0 0.15 seconds with the agent-wise local design for the same system scale. Trivially, the agent-wise local design is much more scalable. Still, the structured global design is practical to solve the medium scale problems of less than a few hundred agents. Thank you for listening to me. I hope you all enjoyed my presentation. Well, thank you, Ahmed, for your presentation. I, I really enjoyed with all the information you provided for the output regulation problem for the heterogeneous multi agent systems. But I think it was really informative, especially for the students. I saw Frank's hand. Frank, do, do you want to unmute yourself and ask your question? If, if, if I may, thanks very much for a very interesting presentation. This is really a very nice topic. One thing that I did not really get, why do you call this a cooperative scheme and not a decentralized scheme? In which way do the different agents cooperate? Uh, in order to achieve something. Yeah, so essentially they are similar, decentralized and distributed. However, in th this literature uh, likes to use the distributed term because some of the, not all of the control structures are the same. For, for, for example, some of GIs are positive, some of GIs are zero, so their structure sometimes changes among the agents depending on the graph, depending on the graph structure. So the cooperative output regulation literature likes to follow the, the term distributed instead of decentralized. But essentially they are similar, in my opinion. I'm, I'm not really sure because, you know, in the classical multi-agent case, also if you would stabilize to the origin a set of multi-agent systems, so predefined origin, not a consensus problems, then we would also not call it a cooperative, uh, a cooperative control problem. Also not a distributed control problem. It's just a decentralized control problem. And I think it's the same here. You know, the agents do not talk, do not agree to, on, on to have, do not have to agree on something because they already know what they want. They want stability and they want to follow a trajectory. So I think it's decentralized, it should be the proper term. Yeah, the term cooperative is there because they cannot achieve the output regulation by themselves. For example, if the third agent by itself, it cannot achieve the output regulation because it has no access to the leader. If all of the agents has access to the leader, we can do with a centralized controller, that's okay. However, the two, in this case, some of the agents have no access to the leader node they need to cooperate together to solve this problem. For example, the first agent helps the third agent to achieve his goal. That's why it's called cooperative. And the distributed, as I mentioned, they have they don't do the same thing. For example, the first one talks with the leader, the third one does not talk with the leader. They have a little bit differences in their control structure depending on the graph. So they distributively compute. If all of the agent states available, all of them, then we can say there is a centralized controller. However, it is distributed computation because, for example, the first agent has no access to all of other agents. So each agent only co uh, considers his neighbors. That's make it says distributed controller. So for example, first agent do not consider the fourth agent. It does not worry about the fourth agent. This is going to be called distributed. Always, you know, if you have one big system with the A matrix that has a couple of zeros, then the same, of course, also holds true. But it's only a matter of nomenclature. It's nevertheless, good research. <laughs> it's thank a, you very it's much. how we call it. We just have to know what we mean by it. So thanks very much. I thank you, Dr. Olgiver, to be here. Any other questions or comments for Ahmed? Ahmed, do you have any future research discussions about that one? Uh, yes, 
there are more research about this uh, research direction still going on. For example, as I mentioned, one of the research directions is the uh, agent-wise local design with more information about the global performance. We develop novel design methods with this perspective. Also, we consider the switching cooperative output regulation with an internal model approach recently. So there will be new publications about the cooperative output regulation soon. Okay, so I, I'm assuming this is a published work, right? Yes, this one. Okay. Is a work. okay. Uh, it, it's a nice research. So one of the problems Tansal and I we need to sit and solve. I think I, I supposed to do it before I graduated, but like considering multiple agents carrying a lot, not the each agent that carrying a lot, but yeah, this research can help me actually to solve out this problem. Well, let's Thanks. see. There's no question on the chat. I mean, uh, Burak, are you here? I saw him. Yeah. Yes, I'm here, Dr. Yusuf. So, um, so we were uh, planning to organize a workshop, right, uh, at the CDC? Or ACC. Or ACC. We haven't decided yet. I mean, since Dr. Algover is also here, we can ask, uh, Frank, are you interested to, you know, we, are, we were planning to organize a workshop about output regulation. Uh, problem, are you interested to organize it with us? We are still, we will still need to reach out to people, but since uh, I saw you here, I just wanted to uh, ask this. It's very kind of you to ask, but I'm not really working in that field anymore at the moment. You know, I've moved on to other things. So I think uh, it would be much better off if you would talk, for example, to uh, the Italian guys, Lorenzo, uh, Marconi or so, that they are. They, they could be interested in joining forces. Thanks for the great suggestions. I'm, I'm afraid I will have to run out to my next meeting because I thought it already starts quarter two. So I was mistaken there. So apologies for that, but I will have to leave. Bye bye, everybody. Sure. Bye. Thank bye. you for attending. Yeah, I guess, uh, Brock, do you want to add anything? So, uh... So, Ahmed, so basically this research is evolving uh, with Burak and Ahmed, Ahmed and Burak, then with me now, yeah. Uh, Burak, you are muted if you are speaking. Oh, no, I was not saying anything. Yeah, I don't oh. have much to add. Yeah, this is an ongoing uh, and still evolving uh, topic. I think that is one more question from Dr. Kichuk Demiral. Matt, thank you very much for this fantastic presentation. Uh, first of all, I would like to congratulate you and your supervisors as well. Uh, my question would be simple uh, indeed. Uh, did you apply these methods on practical systems? Did you carry it out any research on that part or just uh, leave it as a theoretical uh, research topic. Uh, ex uh, application and experiments is in our agenda as a future research. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, actually, we, I mean, if I add something, Ahmed, uh, actually, we already applied this to a mechanical platform, heterogeneous multi agent mechanical platform with adaptive control. So, in that case, these results are serving as reference models, distributed reference models, but it was a toy example. It would be nice to have multi-vehicle uh, experiments as well. Uh, yeah. Very good. Thank you very much. I thank you, Dr. Kuchuk Dembrel, to be here. It's very nice to see you. Right. I think we are done. Well, thanks again, Ahmed, for the nice presentation. Probably I, I will send a couple of emails about some research directions, but yeah, yeah. it's a nice topic. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Thank you, everyone, for Thank attending for this opportunity. All right, so I am ending the session. Thanks, everyone, again, Marve, for organizing this with me and Ahmed. And all right, next <clears throat> talk will be by Yang Tran, Air Force Research Lab. Uh, is it Marvin next week or within? Uh, no, it's uh, March 25th. Let me see. Yes, it's. Yes, 25th. March 25th. So if you are interested on finite time stuff with user defined finite times, young Dr. Trans talk uh, will be on Ms. Marvin said March 25th at the same time on uh, from Air, Air Force Research Lab. So stay tuned.